How did the upgrade go? How does it feel? Hmm. And Anton? What did you make of him? I know everyone's names here. Information is power. And I don't like being without every possible advantage. It's part of the job. Hmm. Makes sense. While he's not one to volunteer the information, Anton is an informed, unempowered. So, for what it's worth, you have more leeway in terms of what can and cannot be discussed in his presence. No. His partner is an earth elemental. They told him about the magical world years ago. He was informed long before he ever started with ETS. That's why he was hired by ETS in the first place. Having a staff of exclusively unempowered people would be a disadvantage. There's no way to reasonably convey the gravity of the situation to them without risking covert. But at the same time, if the entire staff is empowered, that's a risk of its own. That would be a lot of power floating around this place. Power that could easily change direction based on opinion. Anton represents a happy medium. He knows the true importance of the work, but he's not a risk. Not in the same way, at least. And he's very good at his job. Perfect fit. ETS snatched him up as soon as they could. But, speaking of his job... Do you feel comfortable enough with the enhancements to give them a test? As I said, there's no time to waste. And personally, I find that the best way to learn is to do. We need progress. Are you ready to begin? Good. Then allow me to explain what this next phase of the project entails. We're calling it preliminary rollout for the sake of the unempowered members of the team so that they can have a rough understanding of what's going to be occurring. But the more plain explanation is that this part of the project is about information. As I said earlier, we need to know how the Meridian does what it does, so we can either strengthen it or replace it. We can't put you or anyone else in direct contact with the Meridian without being destroyed. So, we need a more surreptitious strategy. <laughs> of course I do. Aria exists in parallel with us, and the Meridian exists between every point in that parallel. But that border is organic and inexact. There are points where the meridian is thinner, 
where the force of the arcana that is Arya sits closer to us. Those places where the meridian is thinnest tend to experience odd occurrences. Presumably because of the proximity of so much arcana. The natural world reacts to it, even unknowingly. Unempowered humans love to create apocrypha to explain those odd circumstances at these odd places. Meanwhile, most empowered people also don't really understand the concept of these soft spots in the meridian, nor do they understand how they are inadvertently affected by them. Empowered humans are drawn to these thin points without much awareness of that fact beyond a vague, imprecise affinity for those places. It's probably something in our cores, something that feels the magic closer and is drawn to it, but on a subconscious enough level that few bother to consider it critically. And from what we can tell, it's been that way for as long as there's been a meridian. Empowered humans gather in these places, naturally. And that's one of the reasons why particular towns and cities have so many magic users in them, rather than us being spread apart evenly, despite our relatively small percentage of the global population. Almost all of the cornerstone cities were built on examples of these spots without even initially realizing it. It's just where magic users tended to already be altogether. So, cities cropped up there. Borden, Dahlia... Mont Blanc, every cornerstone city except McKinley, is built on top of these thaumaturgic fontanelles. And these thin points in the meridian offer an opportunity, one that, through significant experimentation, we found a way to use. The border at these spots is thin enough that we can push into it just slightly, just enough to make a tiny beachhead on its unwelcoming shores. And from that point, just inside, we should be able to get the information we need that's impossible to read from the outside. This facility was built purposely on top of one of these fontanelles. And now we need to use that to get you in. Mm. It's an incredibly complex, difficult process to enact though an easy enough one to explain. Basically, a group of demons will use their considerable combined magical strength to create a series of rifts encircling the space that will become the beachhead, small though it may be. This forms a flexure that stretches incredibly minutely into the meridian itself. 
It's not an easily replicable act. It takes a lot of demons, a lot of power, and a very thin point in the meridian to make this possible at all. And even then, they can barely make an insurgent's point big enough to house a single person, and only for a brief while. The flexure is structurally stable as long as they can maintain power and concentration, but internally, it's incredibly turbulent in a way that the human body is incapable of withstanding. Not to mention, being inside it also seems to have an incredibly deleterious effect on the human brain. Too much white noise that we can't process, for lack of a better term. Demons that enter the flexure are immediately just pulled through to the other side. Their arcana is dragged straight to Arya, like a magnet. It's too powerful of a pull for them to resist. So, with humans and demons out of the equation, that left you. You were created in order to survive those conditions and get us the information that we all need if we're going to keep our world intact. It sounds simple enough in terms of action plan. Demons make an opening, you step in, you scan, you get out. Repeat as necessary, and we get to work on saving the material plane. But, there's something else you need to know. We don't fully understand the Meridian, obviously. But we do know one vitally important thing. There is an intelligence there. One of disputed origin, but which seems to resist being studied. It's alive in some way or other. You might encounter that intelligence in some form. If you do, feel free to try to explain that our mission is to help save it. But you should understand that that help might not be welcome. The Meridian has made it clear that it has its own idea of how to be saved. It sent out two emissaries to that effect. My government has taken those messages under advisement, and the exploration of that proposed solution is ongoing. But the department felt that a contingency plan was called for. And that's us. But the Meridian might not appreciate a second opinion on the best method of ensuring its survival. It certainly hasn't so far, if its resistance to both communication and study is any evidence to go by. Are you ready for this? I won't disrespect your intelligence by pretending that there aren't significant risks involved with this process. But it also is an incredible opportunity, and one that is vitally important to pursue. Are you ready to try it? Good. Then I'll schedule it for tonight. We don't have any time to waste. 
Thank you.